The World Economic Forum brings together some of the finest minds across the world, looking at so many areas, whether it's politics or economics. AI is the big buzzword, but also basic science, which is why we are delighted to have Dr. Minakshi Vadba with us today. She is a world-renowned uh, planetary scientist, but she's also heading the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. And it's fascinating for me to know about how somebody who has done so much uh, in terms of space and research delves or has sort of gotten into the oceans and science over there. What can we learn from planets and our solar system and associated with the work that you're doing at Scripps? Well, so Scripps actually, our mission is to understand and protect the planet. Mm -hmm. And I think the understanding piece is the key. You cannot really understand the planet without understanding the planetary context. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, you know, my background comes in. Um, I'm a planetary scientist, of course, and I study uh, not just Earth, but also the moon and Mars. And so um, just trying to understand how planets become habitable. How does life originate? How does life evolve over time? Well, how do the oceans get here? All of that is part of understanding a planet, and we need to do that before we can actually protect our planet. Which brings me, obviously, to, to the next question. It's, uh, since you've looked very carefully at the data coming back from Mars um, and all of the sensor data, and um, you know, how close are we to actually answering the one question that we want to know all about life on Mars? Yes. You um, know, I think that is the... That is a big question, and we actually have samples that we've collected. Perseverance rover, NASA's Perseverance rover, mm -hmm. has been collecting these samples, and actually there's a couple of them that are incredibly interesting and very tantalizing in terms of the data that we've been able to acquire on these samples. Mm -hmm. And the hint is that there might be evidence of past life in some of these samples. And past life. Past life, right. not, ex not, and not at the current time. Um, but at the present time, I know that NASA's plans for bringing those samples back, they are, th those plans are on hold. So That's uh, right, because of budgeting issues, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. NASA has some budget issues, and uh, so those plans are on hold, um, at least for the foreseeable future. I hope, I hope we'll bring those samples back at some point. But those will be able to answer. I think they're our nearest-term opportunity to answer that big question of whether life ever arose uh, anywhere else in our solar system besides the Earth. Are you enthused by uh, plans by private companies, Elon Musk, for example, uh, determined to get to Mars uh, and the pace at which uh, SpaceX is evolving? It is remarkable, the it number of launches remarkable. they do every year, for example. It is, it is. And, you know, I think we have to think of some out-of-the-box solutions to really get the cost down of the, you know, mission to bring back these samples. And um, it's my hope that there might be an opportunity with commercial space entities like SpaceX being involved, perhaps, or Blue Origin. Um, some of these companies are developing some really, really amazing technologies and at much cheaper costs. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. You know, we had an incredible Mars mission in India called Mangalyan. Yes. <laughs> where at, at a cost of less than a, a Hollywood film, we deployed through a slingshot um, into Mars orbit, a small uh, satellite, which kept working and working and working. And it, it lasted Very. years longer than it was meant to, <laughs> taking Amazing. beautiful photographs. Yes. Um, tell us about your thoughts about India's space program. I think it's super exciting, you know, that when I left India to go to graduate school, India did not have a space program. But now it's just so exciting to see all of the, you know, exploration that India has been able to do, you know, Mars, of course, and mm. the moon, yeah. too. And so um, I'm, I'm really excited about the future. Do you believe program. that future is premised to a large extent on collaboration between different partner nations? The Artemis Accords, for example, yes. is premised on that. That yes. space has to be for peaceful purposes. Science must be shared. Exactly. And I think, you know, science is... It's a team sport and, and exploration is a team sport. And so I think, you know, you can go further and longer if you team up with others and uh, can pool resources. So, yes, absolutely. I think the future is going to be in collaboration. And, and I know that, for example, NASA is collaborating with India on a number of other missions as well, like NISAR. Yes, yes, satellite. that's true. And so, yeah. In fact, you've uh, looked at NISAR data coming back. Is that right? 
Well, we have a number of Scripps uh, scientists that are involved in that mission. And so, yes, they're getting some really incredible And data. what exactly are you looking for in that data? I mean, well, tell, I mean, tell I, our viewers a little bit about NISAR and what it brings back to us. Well, I mean, I think so the Earth observation piece of it is very important. And cer certainly when it comes to, um, you know, looking for indicators for climate change, and hazards, I think all of those kinds of, you know, indicators you can get from uh, some of the exciting data that's coming back from NYSER. So. And so just a, a final question or two. Um, you now, of course, as head of Scripps, look at the world from a different perspective, uh, from the perspective of oceans, certainly. Uh, how much of a risk do we all face if there's a rise in seawater temperatures? Yes, I mean, I think that's that's one of the biggest, biggest things that humanity is facing right now is this planetary scale changes that we're seeing in our environment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think we are, you know, in the coming decades, we're going to see sea level rising. We're going to see extreme weather events that are going to affect most, you know, mo the most vulnerable populations in the world are going to be most affected by that. Mm. And, um, you know, unless we do something about it and we do something really fast and we have to do something really big yeah. to really make a difference at this point. And so, yes, I mean, we have to work together. Dr. Wadhwa, it's been wonderful speaking to you. Thank you so much. And, uh, and carry on with your wonderful science. We need pure science. I mean, not just all the AI business, <laughs> yeah. but that perhaps helps out a bit. Thank you very much Thanks indeed. Thank you.